This is Electrical Engineering Fundamentals. This is the second edition, and it was written by Angus. It's a heavy book. It's got a lot of weight to it, and I think that has to do with the quality of the pages of this particular edition. Um, it just feels like it's a, I don't know, if if if, if there's a, such a thing as a high-class book, this would be it. It's just very, very, like, well-made, very, very good quality, high-quality book. That's what I'm trying to say, high-quality all right, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look here at the inside. I think electrical engineering is one of the hardest majors that you can try to do as an undergrad because you have to learn math and you have to learn, you know, the physics, the engineering. Here's the copyright, 61 and 68, Philippines. And here's the preface to the first edition. Let's take a look and see what it says. This text is intended to assist students of colleges and technical institutes to make the step from their pre-college physics and mathematics into electrical engineering. So you're going from pre-college physics and math to actual engineering. The chapters and sections have been ordered in such a way that an instructor may select portions and sequence for a presentation as a two or three term course. Cool. Let's take a, a brief look here at the contents of this book. So you can see what it what it contains. Table of contents. So the basic principles concerning electricity. So we have these topics here. The basic elements and their mathematical models. Okay. The electrical energy user. It smells really good. Equivalent circuits. I'm sorry, I just have to give it a whiff. Just oh, it smells so good. The book smells incredible. It smells really, really good. Direct current network theory, the nature of magnetism, electromagnetism, meters, inductance and capacitance. We have some more topics here. Look at this phasor algebra, alternating current circuit analysis. And we have some more topics uh, over here. And then there's a list of symbols and uh, mathematical signs in an index. So here's the here's chapter one. Let's just take a look and you know, just read through it carefully and see what it says. The basic principles concerning electricity. Introduction. The study of electricity requires the use of various physical and mathematical tools where electricity cannot be directly viewed by the eye or heard by the car. Or by ear, ear. It looks like looks like a C from a distance. However, we are all familiar with indirect evidence of electrical phenomena: heat, flat iron or stove, light, lamps or thunderstorms, electrical waveforms presented on oscilloscopes and television screens, or readings on meter faces. Electricity is most commonly used to transmit either energy or information from one place to another. And so, it's a very you can see introductory book. You could use this as a beginner. You see here is a, an example. Let's, let's, let's look at this example. A group of electrical particles exerts a force of 20 millinewtons, 20 thousandths of a newton, wow, continuously over a distance of 40 centimeters. Compute the expended energy. So here you have work, okay? Work is force times distance. Okay, so here's your distance, D. There's your force. And then you can compute the work. If you study some calculus, you might say, wait a minute, I thought there was some integration involved. Yeah, that's when you have, um, you know, work done by, uh, you know, a non-constant force. Here, here the force is constant, you see? So the, the force can change. Remember, force is mass times acceleration. So, yeah, so it doesn't necessarily have to be constant because the acceleration can change. And you can see there's a lot of mathematics in this book. I'm sorry, I just have to smell it again. Just yeah, it's, it's a it's heavy. It's heavy. Every time I pick it up, I'm like, wow, this is a book. And it's not that big of a book. Like if you look at the size of the book, let me zoom out here a bit. You know, it's it's here's my hand. So it's a, it's a, it's a good size for a book, but it just it just feels heavier than it should for its actual size. You know, so if I take a different book, well, this one's pretty heavy too. It's not a good example. Yeah, maybe I need to find a newer book. A lot of the newer books are lighter weight and, you know, they're just made with cheaper materials. So sometimes these older books are really well made. 
Oh, look, you've got some pictures in here. Well, that's cool. That's not something you see uh, too much of in older books. And you have to think about it. Back then, it was it was harder to put stuff in books. So whenever you see diagrams and pictures in older books, for me at least, I always look at it and think like, wow, you know, that's that's impressive. Yeah, let's get either one more whiff here. Oh, smells amazing. Electromagnetism. Here's a here's a here's a quote. Let's read this. I often say that when you can measure what you are speaking about and can express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. It may be the beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thoughts advanced to the stage of science, whatever the matter may be. Yeah, that's true, right? If you can put numbers on things, if you can measure things, uh, you're taking a, what do they call it, quantitative approach, analytical approach. Um, people use different words for different things, but basically you're you're using math or using numbers to try to describe something or rationalize some situation or explain some phenomenon, right? So, yeah. Yeah, you do a lot of this in physics. So if you study if you study some physics, and I, mean, I, I studied three semesters of physics. I, I ne I've never taken an engineering class, but I do know some physics, and you you do see a lot of this in physics. So. Um, it, it's refreshing if you if you have a physics background. And this book, by the way, it's got oh, tables of logs, right? This is, uh, you know, pre-calculator. Yeah, it's got answers to the odd number problem. So if you're using this for self-study, it's actually pretty good, right? It's a pretty good book for self-study because you've got these answers. You've got a solid book. Um, as far as availability, I don't know how hard this book is to find. I'll leave some links in the description. Uh, in case you want to check it out, but there's modern engineering books too. I have a couple modern ones on electrical engineering, and I guess the big differences that I've noticed are just like the layout. Um, although this 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 has a really good layout for such an old book. Was it 61, 68? The copyright? Let's just double check. I'm pretty sure that was what it was. Yeah, 61, 68. So yeah, it just it just has a very good layout for um, you know the type of book that it is. And you can see it's got a lot of exercises, so it's not like, look at this. Look at all these problems. I mean, this is insane. So many problems. So this is not something you often see in old books. A lot of old books won't, won't have as many problems, or the problems won't be uh, up to par with what's in modern books. A good example of that would be, like, if you look at, like, the first edition of Serge Lang's uh, first course in calculus, you know, his, his calculus book. Um, it doesn't have a lot of content, but you can see it's, it's been really revised and modernized um, in the newer editions, and his first edition, like the exercises, are they're just too easy, right? They're just too easy compared to like what's being taught in school today. You might say, "What? I thought I thought math books got easier over time." That's true in general, but that's not always true, right? So the calculus that's taught in that book is 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 just easier. The problems are not hard enough. Uh, whereas this book, it's you know probably about an equal age, uh, around the same time that Lang's book uh, came out. I don't know the exact copyright of his calculus book, but you know, you can assume it's in the 60s or 70s, and uh, it, it just doesn't have as many exercises as this. So this miraculously uh, you know, survived the test of time because a modern physics book will have a lot of exercises like this, right? Uh, a modern um, electrical engineering book will have a lot of exercises like this. So to see this many exercises in an old engineering book is, is impressive is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, um, Kind of a nice book. I will leave a link in the description. If you want to learn math, check out my courses. They're on Udemy. But if you get them, use the links from my website or from the uh, mathsocial.com or from the description of this video because it helps me greatly and I've lowered the prices. As always, keep doing mathematics. Take care.